Okay, this is the final video in this four-part series. We started with the first part being the derivation of the method. The second and third video were how to get a extra vector so that you didn't have a full set of linearly independent eigenvectors. And so we did a two by two case and a three by three case. And now we're going to do finish up with um, once again, let me remind you, we're trying to solve the system x prime equals ax. And um, x prime equals ax, the matrix A is defective, meaning that it doesn't have a full set of linear independent eigenvectors. And so uh, this is our last situation where we're going to need two eigenvectors, generalized eigenvectors are called. So we're going to have um, I, eigen, a 3x3 three three system with um, an eigenvalue with algebraic multiplicity 3 but only one eigenvector. What that means is the geometric multiplicity is equal to one. And so we're gonna need two eigenvectors. You take the one that you have, um, the eigenvalue and the eigenvector, that makes up one part of your solution. We're gonna need two other solutions, x1 and x2, that are linearly independent to x sub zero. And we've seen how to build the x1. We make it e to the lambda t v1 and t v2 zero that um that v1 and v0 we've seen how they get made up now the next step is we have to go and get a second linear independent eigen um generalized eigenvector solution where we add on an extra part we still we, it looks the same we have the sort of linear part here but now we're going to need a, a third part kind of like quadratic here and so um we have uh the v naught and the v1 in this x2 solution is the same as the v naught and v1 in the x1 solution. And so in order to make this happen, um, we're going to have to satisfy some equations like before. This time, though, it's going to be a minus lambda i cubed on v2 is 0. We'll have a minus lambda i squared on v2 not 0 to make sure that we can get another vector v1 v1 is going to be what you get when you take a minus lambda i on v2. So we get this chain. It's a three chain where we have a two eigen, a one eigenvector and two generalized eigenvectors. And then um, where does v0 come from? v0 comes from taking um, a minus lambda i squared on v2. So, so, so v1 comes from a minus lambda i on v2. There's nowhere does it say that needs to be zero. Okay, let's make sure. So a minus lambda i on v2. We've got to make sure that's not zero. That's to make sure that it's not an eigenvector. Um, and also um, a minus lambda i squared on v2. We don't want that to be zero. What we want these guys to be, though, we want these guys to be v1 and v0. So the process is going to start with taking a minus lambda i and cubing it and trying to find the null space there. When you get the v1 and v2, make sure that they are linearly independent to the original eigenvector v. And then when you put your solution together, as a linear combination of x naught, x1, and x2. Okay, so let's see how it works. We have x prime is this matrix a times x. And it turns out that when we go to find the eigenvalue, it's nice we have this first row that we're going to expand about because it has these two zeros in it. And so we'll get the 1 minus lambda times this subdeterminant. That guy will multiply all out to be lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 1. And so it turns out then that lambda minus 1 is an eigenvalue of multiplicity 3. That's its, that's its algebraic multiplicity. When we go to find the eigenvector along with that, we subtract 1 along the diagonal and try to fi find a null space there. Um, what that gives us is a row of zeros, 0, 2, 2, and this, this row here. And just you don't have to actually perform these operations, but you can see what's going to happen when you get to row echelon form. We'll make row 3 be row 1. We'll scale it down by a half, and we'll take row 2 and leave it as row 2, scale that down by a half, 
and we end up in this row echelon form for our augmented matrix, then if these guys were sort of variables x, y, and z, not the same x, um, then we're going to get that z is free, and from the second equation we're going to get that y is the opposite of z, and then from the uh, first equation we're going to get that x is y plus z. And so you let z, since z is free, then um, we're going to let z be anything, for, at first we're just going to let it be a t, and then once that's determined, then y will be negative t, and then it turns out when we add these together, that x actually ends up at zero. And so this, this vector here, written in this format, will be the v, the, um, the eigenvector, the only eigenvector that, that, that we got out of this. The geometric multiplicity is 1, while the algebraic multiplicity is 3. So that's our v, 0, negative 1, 1. Now we go to our equations. That, that gives us one third of our solution, of our linear combination. We now, we now need to go get the x1 and the x2. But we start with the x2 though. The x2 is built off of the fact that a minus i, or lambda i, but lambda is 1, a minus i cubed on v2 is equal to 0. Let's go back and remember what a minus lambda i was. This right here is a minus lambda i, and when we cube that, what happens is we end up not with a zero matrix like um, we did in the other examples. When we cube that, we end up with this matrix, uh, first row of zeros, and, the, and then we have a four and a couple of zeros and a negative four and a couple of zeros. That's from squaring it, and then one more time, and we actually do get the cube of it to be zero. So if a minus i cubed is equal to zero, then it doesn't matter, um, that should be true for all V2. If this guy already is the zero matrix, then when we multiply by V2, uh, it'll be zero. So A minus lambda I squared is not zero, but A minus lambda I cubed is zero. Okay, and so we get to pick our V2. We want to pick it so that we we get um, it linearly independent from V1, uh, from V. Remember what V was? In the, in the uh, last slide, v was 0, negative 1, 1. And so when we pick our 0, negative 1, 1, when we pick our v2 out, usually you want to pick it to be i or j, something simple, 1s and 0s, other places, just to make sure that it, um, it, it isn't a linear combination of the other guy. And so we have our v2, great, and now we need our v1. How do we get our v1? We take a minus i and we multiply it on, we take a minus i and we multiply v2 by it. That'll give us our v1. Remember what a minus i is, it's this guy here. Multiply by v2 is just picking off the first column of v2. And that'll be our v1. Double check and make sure that it's um, not a linear combination or not a multiple of the original eigenvector, and it isn't. That's great. And now to get V naught, we take A minus I squared on V2. And what comes out there, it's okay for V0 to be a multiple. In fact, I think it will always be some, some multiple of the um, original eigenvector. V0 will be that because it's going to be that A minus I on V0 is actually 0. But that's okay, though. That's fine. And, and, and you know you're doing it right when that happens. And so now we put the pieces together. Remember, x1 is supposed to be e to the lambda t v1 plus t v0. And, um, and x2 is supposed to be e to the t v2 plus t v1 plus 1 half t squared v0. So we have our solutions, and we put them together in a linear combination. Here's our V1, here's our V0, V1 and V0. And now we have this V2 that we went and found. And um, we can factor out the e to the t that they all have in common. And take the, uh, the C1 times your V. And then take the C2 times putting those two guys together. And then when it comes to C3, we put these three guys together. And we're done.
So three by three with um, an eigenvalue of uh, algebraic multiplicity three, but geometric multiplicity only one. So we needed two generalized eigenvectors. And then we put them together in the system. Okay, and that's it. That's it for section 7.5, looking at x prime equals ax, where a is defective. All right, great.